I think first I've got to apologize. There won't be any V process in my presentation because mainly at AMG, we're not working in that. We're working in the loop process. So we're looping, constantly improving our product till Tobias is happy, our COE. And he's very demanding. <laughs> so, but maybe let's start from the start. Um, AMG was found, for the, those who are not really familiar with AMG, in 1967. Uh, Hans van Aufrecht and Gerhard Melcher were offered to either leave Mercedes to build their prototypes and their motorsport cars or stay in Mercedes. So they decided to leave Mercedes, build that S-Class and compete in the 24 hours race of Spa. Nowadays we produce like 37 models, have 1,700 employees and in 2017 we sold 130,000 cars apart from all the wheels and the bumpers and stuff like that you see on the standard Mercedes cars. Yep. yep. Our brand promise is driving performance. That doesn't just count for the product, which is obvious we want to have performance product, but as well for the people, for the teams we have, and our development process. So it's a big promise we try to c compete with every day. Just look in the development of uh, simulation at AMG. I started with AMG at 2006, as uh, Helmut already mentioned, when we started with the C63, 204, and the SLS development. Uh, then pretty quickly, Sebastian joined us in 2010 with the introduction of uh, the electric SLS. Uh, we went uh, on to Adams and car real time. Then a bit later, two other guys started uh, with us. And that all leads to the DIM, which we introduced in 2018, just at the end of 2018. It started to work uh, at our promise, uh, premises. And obviously, on the way there, we had big help from VI Grade getting that done. We were quite a few times in Udine, and our friends from Multimatic helped us quite a lot on, on the way there. We had quite a few sessions in Toronto as well. Um, going to the project one, I think that's a perfect example on how we work together on the simulator and how AMG works and getting a product running and getting a concept running. We were confronted with a great idea, a very difficult idea, of putting a Formula One powertrain into a road car. So there was a big question, how are we going like, to uh, define all the subsystems coming from vehicle targets? like oh, so no, uh, 0 to 200 in six seconds, obviously a notch life at time, which I'm not allowed to tell you. Uh, 25 kilometers electric distance, over 300 kilometers uh, of top speed, and which is what is very important for us, drivability uh, of the car and accessibility, especially with such a car, but with all the other sports cars we're doing as well. Most of our customers, they are not necessarily the race driver who can really drive on the limit like the VI driver. They actually are everyday drivers and when, once they get around to use the performance of the car, they need to be able to control the car, feel the car and really uh, attack the limit. So there we went on the simulator uh, and started to define all the subsystem. Obviously quite quickly we defined the all wheel drive and the torque vectoring for the front axle to have uh, proper performance in longitudinal direction and have the control controllability with over 1,000 horsepower output. Weight was obviously a big uh, thing, aero even bigger thing, and tire sizing, battery sizing with a, having a hybrid powertrain. Um, coming to the aero, obviously with a car, yeah, like that aero and the lap time we want, are aiming for is a big, big challenge. We set quite aggressive aero targets um, for road because we wanted to reach a high top speed, but as well for track mode. So quite quickly we went into CFD and uh, looked at the design models the designer came up with and quite obviously there had to be some quite extensive changes to make it work aerodynamically. Um, then. We designed a road version with, yeah, no uh, lifted up spoilers, uh, stored uh, aerodynamic gadgets to have the efficiency on the road. Um, a track mode, which is the uh, CFD uh, calculation as well, with 
active louvers, uh, active rear spoilers, and again, to be quick on the dirting and straight, uh, have a track DRS mode. All that obviously uh, asks for not just design modification, but like right height adjustment to get the aerodynamics out. So next step was quite obviously the suspension. We had the right height adjustability. We saw quite quickly that on the, oh, and we know beforehand that road targets and uh, uh, targets for spring stamping uh, on the notch life is quite different to what you want on the road, especially with high downforce and all these high uh, impact uh, and energy impacts uh, on the notch life with asking for damping and control or body control. And we wanted to adjust the balance in track mode. And obviously the bump stops uh, would have been quite useful or are useful if you adjust them and make sure you don't touch the floor. So we went for push rod suspension with independent roll heave dampers not just adjustable dampers, which are quite obviously standard in that uh, section of the cars, uh, but adjustable rockers to enable us to drop the car and adjust the springs and dampers at the same time. So everything is quite raised, uh, heavily raised uh, there. You see animation there <coughs> of the front and rear dampers and how the roll and heave uh, dampers work. Next thing, tires. Always very important. If they work, you've got a good car. If they don't work, uh, you can have the best chassis in the world and it wasn't work. So we went into our strategic partner, uh, on with our strategic partner Michelin to integrate Tame Tire into our simulation environment and uh, simulate environment to be able to have the physical behavior and not only the thermal behavior there as well, which is important if you run on a long racetrack, uh, but to have realistic limit behavior. It changes quite drastically to the Pacheca model if you implement tame tire, how the car limits on, uh, behaves on the limit and how you be, are able to catch it again and feel the car on the limit. So that is, does make a big difference. I think Julien is going to tell you quite a lot about it later on. Suspension. You already told you we had like uh, the uh, demand for road leveling but as well with such high power inputs on the front axle as well. I mean, we got like two times 240 kilowatts roughly uh, on the front axle. So that can produce quite a lot of torque steer on the front and rear. Uh, high canvas stiffness is quite obvious. Demand we had optimized drivability, like I said, uh, that's quite a big uh, yeah, demand in, within our development process. Improved corner exit, improved braking is quite obvious with such a car where you can have high decelerations, accelerations, and pretty high lateral accelerations. So it was quite clear for us, with all our experience in developing five-link rear axle suspensions and uh, five-link suspension, which we had like on the front, like we had on the SLS E-Drive, um, to go for that, uh, to integrate pretty high camber stiffness, which is possible. I mean, loads of people tell you oh, on a hyper car on a super sports car, you need double wishbone suspension to gain high canvas stiffness. I think that's not true. Uh, you can reach the same levels uh, if you do it properly and have all the freedom in the kinematic layout and in a lesser kinematic layout. Central wheel nuts were integrated to have uh, the big uh, levers for, for torque uh, yeah, support. Obviously, all going constantly on in the loop uh, on the simulator, checking out again, creating wheel loads for durability, not just from dim runs on the Nordschleife Hockenheim ring, but having like special loads as well, cascading them down in atoms to all the parts, feeding that again into FE calculation to optimize weight, stiffness, strength, durability and feed that obviously again in back into Adams, back into the car real-time model to have the compliance uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, adjustable in there. Okay, last step on that whole development uh, was obviously controller design. We went uh, the hard route, like you told us as well, uh, uh, by Volvo, of building an X1 bug with not only the ESP system and iBooster, obviously we have a hybrid braking system in there, 
but as well the powertrain controller, which takes care of all the battery recuperation, uh, front wheel, rear wheel drive, and the drive unit, which is an AMG special uh, ECU, which takes care of all the drive modes and damper adjustment and EDIF and stuff like that if you have it on the car. All that uh, we uh, combined with the vector box to do all the respite simulation and communicate to uh, our simulation environment. Why all that? Obviously, high controllability and high performance ask for really finely stepped support, adjustable support, and uh, maximum performance. Obviously, recuperation strategy is uh, quite a task, as you can imagine. You don't want a huge battery, so you want a small battery, so you have to really have a good strategy to make that work. Front torque vectoring, obviously, uh, and all the general brake control systems are on board, and we are on the way to set it all up. As well, that is as well a thing which is special to all these kind of products and cars. If you don't have a car which is similar, if you can't build a mule because it's just like no, nobody else did it before, you really depend on simulation. So even the brake control guys, they are really keen on getting in there and, and doing their work there. But if they they are supposed to do work on the simulator. They want their hardware. They want their control strategy. They don't want to start with software in the loop and buggering Bosch or somebody else to create a software in the loop function. So that's why we went that way, which wasn't always easy, as you can imagine, or whoever did it already. So now uh, I think enough of talking. I'm going to hand it over to our racing driver. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Before that, to conclude that all, uh, as you've seen, uh, the simulator is a very good chance to actually not just like build a team, have one target, but ev get everybody around at the uh, simulator, designers, aero, suspension, tire developer, test drivers, control guys, which not just only gives you a very early clear view of, of the project and the target, but it's like getting everybody on one target and in the team. Quite often you've got like the designers, they think, oh yeah, right. He told me to do that, but maybe it's not that important or, and there, and the collaboration of tires and things like that, but there you got really the chance to work as a team and combine with internal guys and obviously with all our external partners like Mercedes HPP who built the powertrain, Multimatic, Michelin, and loads of others, obviously. So now, finally, it's the time to hand it over to our racing driver. He doesn't know anything about simulation, doesn't know anything about curves or numbers, unless it's a lap time, but he knows how to drive the car. With every step in our history, we challenge the limit.
One day has just begun. AMG, driving the future of performance.